Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Colossians chapter 1. This is again one of Paul's prison epistles. This is a church that Paul never visited. Of all the churches he writes to, he's ne he never went here. Paul, apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. Now that's one will we can't have today. You can't claim that. Because remember, apostle has to be threefold. You have to have been baptized of John's baptism. You can't do that. You have to be with the physical life of Jesus Christ on this earth. You can't see that. You can't do that. And you have to see the resurrected Christ. And you can't see him in trees or your peanut butter toast or anywhere. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. So that's one will of God we can't claim. And Timothus, that's Timothy, our brother. To the saints and faithful brethren. So there are saints and there are faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, which means punishment or correction. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's his, that's his greeting. We give thanks, would be Timothy and Paul, we give thanks to God. And to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Paul was a prayer warrior. <coughs> Since we heard of your faith, remember he wasn't there, so he gets word, in Christ Jesus, and of the love which you have to all the saints. So there's unity of the brethren, there's helping, there's love, there's care in this church. And the way Paul gets is not by first-hand contact, is he gets reports by people he comes across Christians. Hey, you know that church in Colossians? Man, they love each other. Really? Yeah. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. That's where our hope is. The blessed hope. When he writes to the Thessalonians, he said, those that you know die without hope. No, we die with hope. Which is laid up for you in heaven. Whereof he heard from the word of the truth of the gospel. You hear that? They didn't watch a video. They heard the word of God. The word of truth. Paul told the, the Corinthians, there's another gospel. So you got to make sure you got the gospel of the truth that came from the word of God. Which is come unto you as it is in all the world. So that, so the gospel is traveling all over. Not just by Paul, by the other 11 apostles, by the disciples, by the churches themselves. Man, they're witnessing. They're setting the world on fire. Too bad we're not today. And bringing forth fruit, people are getting saved. As it does also in you, since the day ye heard of it. They have been active since they heard the word of God and got saved. There has been no backsliding for this church at all. And knew the grace of God in truth. It's a personal relationship with God. As he also learned of Aphrodis, our dear fellow servant. That's a great study there. Fellows, as I mentioned before, with Paul. There's fellow servant, fellow prisoner, fellow warrior, fellowship. For it is for you a faithful minister of Christ. That says a lot for Paul to say about this guy. 
who also declared unto us your love in the spirit. So Aphorias, forgive me if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, a saved brother in the Lord, he is a faithful minister and he's the one that's come to Paul and said, hey, you know these Colossians? They're great. Remember, there was, there was, there was, I was it, Cleo was it that came to Paul about the Corinthians? They, you know, Paul, this church over here, they're carnal. They're bad. This one says, hey, this church is good. So people will report on what your church is. Be careful. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Again, he's a prayer warrior. And to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Notice knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. The three great things. You can't lack one. You lack one of the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you're in trouble. Solomon, I forget which one, he lacked one of them. Look at the trouble he got into. Satan, I forget which one he had, but he's lacking one of them. I believe it's understanding. Satan has all knowledge. Satan's wise a man, but he don't have the godly understanding. That you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, pleasing God and not yourself. Being fruitful in every good work. So fruitful is not just winning souls and notches on your belt. Whatever you do, may it produce some kind of fruit. What, what would be the greatest fruit of all fruit for a Christian? Crowns and rewards and inheritance. And increasing in the knowledge of God. Now look what Paul is telling these Christians. You guys are doing so great. You're wonderful. You've got a great report among you. Do more. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't halt. Don't slimmer down. Don't stay in the middle of the road. Stay on fire and do more. Strengthen with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. In our weakness, God can give us power. In our hurry up and ability, God can give us patience. In our, oh, come on, Lord, long suffering. Ah, oh, miss joyfulness. Giving thanks unto the Father. Paul keeps saying that over and over and over. Give thanks. No, just don't ask God. Thank God. Which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So, even though I'm here in prison, you're over there in Colossae, we're all together. We're one church. We're one unity. We have the light of Jesus Christ. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness, Satan, John chapter 3, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's funny because 2 Corinthians 11, he speaks about Satan transforming. And yet he says for us, translated. In whom we have redemption being bought back through his blood, no works, no water, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And even the forgiveness of sin. We are redeemed by the blood and we are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. That is our salvation. Not circumcision. Who is the image of the invisible God? No, so Jesus Christ is God's image. When you saw Jesus Christ, you saw God. So when you see the Old Testament, they say, well, they saw God. Moses saw God. Joshua saw God. The elders saw God. And yet the Bible says God's a spirit. So who did they see? Unlike the Jehovah Witnesses, they saw Jesus Christ. And we're going to see that in a minute. He's the angel of the Lord when he's seen that. You're looking in the eyes of God. Jesus Christ himself. You wonder how he sounded. I want to know what God sounds like. What is a whole, What is my voice going to be holy? Is it going to be as loud as it is now? We just read last night about him standing in front of Balaam's ass. And yeah. him speaking. The firstborn of every creature. That's interesting. Let's read on. For by him, 
Who? The Dear Son, verse 13, with a capital S. See, there's sons of God, and there's the Son of God. Were all things... Now, how can you say that's not God? If you got Genesis 1 in your Bible. Okay, let's just take Genesis 1 for a minute with this verse. Where is the name Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, -S, in Genesis 1? And yet, isn't Genesis 1 about the creation? And it says, for by him were all things created. That means Jesus had to be there. And I told you, John 1.1, 1, 1, 1 John 5. God said let, God said let, God said let. There's Jesus when God spoke. He's the word. He's the word that created everything. That are in, the he in heaven. Stars, moons, planets, solar systems. And are in the earth. Trees, lions, tigers, water, land. Visible. Uh, rocks. Invisible. Atoms. Protons. See, even before the realm of science, Paul, you know what? You guys, when you look in your microscope, God already told us there's things you can't see. But they're there. Whether they are, whether they be thrones, uh-oh, they're thrones somewhere. America's stepped away from the throne. We went to an Oval Office. That's an egg. That's why we have an eagle. Laid an egg. Should be a chicken. Or dominions. Okay. Okay, here's trouble. Principalities. We know who that is. That's the realm of Satan. Satan has a throne, and, and Lord willing, I hope not. I mean, right to have the rapture happen right now, but if we ever get the revelation, we're, we're going to read about Satan's throne is sitting in one of those cities. Or powers. So what's all these these intergalactical movies and 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 uh, I was going to say Ginsu. I've been saying that a lot. Uh, karate movies and stuff like that. What? Who's got the power? And all these cartoons, they got power. And you know what? The biggest thing today with humans, they got to make sure they have power for their phones. Power. All things were created by him. Who? The son. And for him. Well, that's not the son. That son is not Jesus Christ. I don't know who it is. And he, the son, is before all things. That's why he said over here, he's the firstborn of every creature. Before anything that there ever was to be, there was God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And by him, all things consist. So whatever there is, it's because of Jesus. Do you realize Jesus said that even hell was made by God himself and Jesus? And he is the head of the body, the church. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Well, we got the firstborn of every creature. Now we got the firstborn of the dead. All right, there are people that were resurrected in the Old Testament. There were people who were resurrected in the time of Jesus, but they died again. Jesus, the only one that went in that grave, dead, came out of that grave, and is never going to die again. When is the next time that going to happen? The rapture. But it's not going to happen again until the rapture. You can, you can get the paddles, you can get the medical, whatever they do, you can come back to life, but you will die. Death is sure, the wages of sin is death, but the rapture will set us all free from death. And how do we know? Because Jesus Christ is free from death. Firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So what is the empty tomb? The empty tune is the accomplishment of all that was all to be done. That is what makes you a Christian. 
If Christ never came out of that tomb, then there would be no salvation. There would be no resurrection. There would be no life. There would be still the grave and death. So Jesus Christ mastering and conquering death. He would be exalted above all. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be born again. You must be saved. That name is Jesus, the one that came out of that tomb alive. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. So what's all your fullness of being saved? What is your fullness that God will call you as a son, Jesus Christ? How? The empty tomb. You realize some people are going to stand before Jesus Christ one day and they're going to say, my religion, what I did, I was good. I was didn't believe in you, God. Whatever they're going to say before God. And God's going to say, hey, listen, that empty tomb that you heard preach, that you heard on the radio, that you had somebody come to your house, that is accomplishment. What can you do more better than me? And remember, remember what God did through the whirlwind with Job? Where were you when the fountains were laid? Where, do you, can you measure the water? And those same kind of questions can be put to me. Okay, you, you're, so, you're so perfect and all that. Let's see you make something right now. And yet, I have that power, God speaking. You can't even fathom how great and wonderful and important Jesus Christ is. Eternity is made to worship him. Eternity, everything to be eternal is all about Jesus Christ. There'll be no www dot that guy's name ministry. It'll be all Jesus Christ. And having made peace, you want peace? All right. If you want peace, we had a guy one time. Peace, peace. Where's the peace? Through the blood of his cross. No blood, no cross, no peace. That's one of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. By him, Jesus Christ, I mean, who died on the cross? What would Acts 20, 28 said? Who's that blood? Acts 20, 28, God's blood. To reconcile that is to bring back together. My sin separated God from me. Jesus Christ said, hey, you want to get back to God, the Father, Almighty, that made you? Yes, I, I, got, I can do that job. Oh, Jesus, uh, being a Ro Polish Roman Catholic and going to the Catholic Church. Really? That is going to outdo what I just read so far in this chapter. That's going to outdo? No, it's not. The blood of Jesus Christ through his cross. So the priest does hocus pocus. He turns the wine into blood. Is that wine in that cup from the from the cross? No. So it can't save you. Scripture with scripture. Reconcile all things unto himself. Well, wait a minute, I'm reconciled I am not reconciled with God because of my sins. Christ is a is a mediator between man and God. I think first Timothy two. Now, if God is not Jesus and God and Jesus is not God, why would he say, reconcile all things unto himself if he's not God? Because that's a, that's a particular statement there. I am not reconciled with Christ, except for by his sin offering. And being God, his sin offering makes me close to him, who is God. But him, Jesus, all about the Son, I say, whether there be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated. So there's the reconciliation. I was alienated from God. Jesus Christ reconciled. I am no more an alien. I am the Son of God. I don't have a green card. I have, a I have a blood card, the blood of Jesus Christ. I have not been given a card. I have been given the blood of Jesus Christ to make me a child of God. And enemies in your mind, 
your mind. You know, before you're saved, you were not thinking right. I mean, come on. If you've been in any ministry and dealt with lost people, have you thought the, the things that come out of their mouth? Especially ones that profess to be Christians. Like, really? That came out of your mouth? Your mind by wicked works. Yet now has he reconciled again. To you, God, you were wicked in your minds and your thoughts. You were enemies. You were alien. And you've been reconciled. That's what makes you a saint. That's what makes you a Christian. In the body of his flesh through death. So, his flesh. Who's been the his? Who is that pronoun we're talking about? It's Jesus Christ. To be present, to present, uh, present you holy and unblameable and un, uh, unreprovable in his sight. Well, we know he's talking about God, but who's been the pronoun? It's Jesus. So I am holy in the eyes of God, my soul. This flesh is not. In the spirit, I am holy. Unblameable. But in this flesh, I'm guilty. And I need the blood to cleanse me of my sins. If you walk up to God, it would be the great white throne judgment, and say, hi God, without Jesus Christ, you are a filthy, stinking, rotten sinner. And the best illustration, like I said, we, we do the farmer's market, is you are a piece of fruit. You are a banana that's black, corroded with fruit flies. And what do you do with that? You throw it in the garbage. You get rid of it. You don't keep it for sentimental value. It has no value. It's rotted. If you continue in the faith, so see, if you continue, you can fall out. Demas will. Grounded and settled. And be not moved away. Demas. He left. Mark left for a while. But he came back. From the hope of the gospel. Oh, we got hope over here in death. Now our hope is in the gospel, which ye have heard. In which ye have preached to every creature. Well, Look at Mark 16. Look at Mark. Run that back to Mark 16. Go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Guess what the Colossian church is doing? They're going out and they're preaching the gospel. Look at that. Cross reference. They are obeying the Bible. To every creature which is under heaven. Where I, Paul, am made a minister. I'm also doing it too, guys. You and I, we're the same boat. There's no difference between apostleship and, and a saint. We are out there trying to tell people about Jesus Christ. Now, in the pulpit, in, in the government of the church, I'm an apostle. But we're doing the same thing. We're telling the lost about Jesus. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you. Again, he's in prison. And fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh, beaten, stone, for his body's sake, which is the church. Acts 9, 3 through 15. Wherein I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. I'm suffering because of you guys. Paul is an example. Guess what? There is no easy living as a Christian. It ought not to be. Because it isn't. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Uh-oh. Even the mystery. Here comes another mystery. Which have been hid from ages and from generations. But now is made manifest to his saints. Alright, here we go. To whom God would make known... What is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles? Here it is. What is Christ in you? 
What's this mystery? Christ is in me. We got another problem. We read from Genesis to Colossians 1. We did the Gospels. Jesus said, the Comforter will come. If I don't send to the Father, the Comforter won't come. We read the Scriptures. The, the, the Comforter, Holy Ghost, will dwell inside me if I'm saved. So Paul had a little accident here. He accidentally wrote Christ instead of the Holy Spirit. Unless he's telling us Christ is the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is Jesus. So not only do I have the Holy Spirit indwelling in me, I've got Jesus Christ indwelling in me. That's something. Okay, you run back to you run back to the law. Galatians, David, Solomon, Moses never had the Holy Spirit indwell in them. He dwells in me. So when you sin, when you see what you're not supposed to see, when you touch what you're not supposed to touch, you inhale what you're not supposed to inhale. You taste or drink what you're not supposed to taste or drink. You are subjecting Jesus Christ to your sin. How's that? Does that make you want to confess your sins? If he's in you. Whom we preach. Warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. How do you present them perfect? We've seen it. The gospel. The gospel. I'm not going to go on the street and pre, you know, give money and all that. Because that's not what's going to give you peace. That's not what's going to make you perfect. Whereunto I also labor... Striving according to his working, the gospel. Christ died for our sins according to scripture, was buried, and arose again according to scripture, which worketh in me mightily. Man, he's having all, he's going all out. And he's got the churches going all out. Man, I, I, can you just imagine, everybody probably knew that these churches, everybody knew Paul. There probably wasn't one place in Asia they'd never heard of Paul. And about Christianity. And I bet you right now, if you were to go to a Baptist church and start taking the Sunday school kids out and ask them questions about the Bible, what kind of answers you would get? How about the adults? You know?